to the vlog of M3, where the motto is, All filler, no killer. Are you not entertained? A little bit ago, we passed 200 subscriptions. That's 200 subs. That's 200 subs that we have. I'm so thankful for these subs. Think about what you can do with 200 subs. This is gonna be great, having 200 subs. Now we can do things with these subs. A little bit ago, I was actually driving around and I saw this, uh, this chicken restaurant that was advertising that had fried bologna. It dawned on me how much funnier a lot of songs would be if they were just about fried bologna. I've been frying so long to make this bologna. It is deep fried bologna. Love. What is love? Frying bologna. Bologna. Fry some more. said tubular back in the 80s. I'm just, I'm just not buying it. And? Today I'm gonna tell you about a band called the Cocteau Twins. It's Mr. Nerd and Nerd and The Cocteau Twins. I've never met anyone that's ever heard of them, but you know. That aside, they're a really interesting band from the 80s. They started in the early 80s and they were just a really, really interesting band. They're one of those bands that's very polarizing and you either get it or you don't, you know. Just super interesting vocals, really strange guitar patterns and chords and just effects and just an entirely different approach to music than is, that is common. Now the idea behind their vocal approach is Elizabeth Fraser focuses on the sounds of words, the aesthetics of words, whether a word is aurally pleasing, meaning it has a interesting sound. The actual syllables and parts of words is what she's focusing on, and she writes that way, and that's basically how the lyrics get written, and sometimes that's in a language, sometimes it's totally made up, but it's really interesting.
interesting band. It's just, it's, it's otherworldly. This is one of those things that's really interesting to me because when I'm writing lyrics, that's how it starts out. I'll listen to a piece of music that I'm writing or whatever, and I'll start to like want to say things. Like it, the lyrics start to write themselves, but where I part from the Cocteau Twins thing is, you know, these sounds eventually turn into words that are supposed to make some kind of sense. And it's kind of a gutsy thing that they're doing because it's just like a hundred percent uncompromising when it comes to the aesthetics of the words. So uncompromising that, you know, the actual literal meaning of the words is totally thrown out. But there is like a lot of, there's this undercurrent of like meaning being conveyed under the whole thing, which is just really intriguing because there's not any real words. In my own uh, musical development, my development of like my tastes and stuff, you know, I listened to a lot of classic rock and I kind of branched out into some of the weirder you know, bands like Rush and Yes and Genesis, and uh, that was pretty cool for a while, but as an artist, you just get really tapped out after a while, and you really want to try something new. And the Cocteau Twins was kind of like that for me. When I first heard them, it was just like, holy crap, what is this? Like, they break all the rules of music. And... Well, anyway, that's it for today. I'm gonna be honest, uh, I don't know what fried bologna is. <laughs> Greetings from M3 land. Have a good one.